Dr. Kelly Gray Yearham of UF Health Jacksonville. Good morning, and uh, thank you all very much uh, for being here. Um, Dr. Haley uh, is near and dear to all of our hearts at UF Health Jacksonville, and I think he would be incredibly uh, excited to see uh, the number of people in this room and the topics that we're discussing this morning. So I'm going to pivot topics just a little bit, and uh, it's not quite as snazzy as what John was just talking about, but what I'm going to tell you about is some innovations in how to harness big data to actually bring it down to the patient bedside and impact the patient, much like Mr. S that we just heard about in that video that was so uh, entertaining. <laughs> There we go. All right, so I'm going to talk to you about harnessing big data in the electronic healthcare record. Why are we talking about the healthcare record? Well, because 96% of acute care hospitals utilize an EHR, an electronic health record, to care for their patients. And you can see the big uptick that's happened over the last several years. And about 88% of patients in the United States use some sort of electronic portal or electronic way to communicate with their healthcare providers. So really understanding the data and using the electronic healthcare record to its greatest potential is going to become increasingly more and more and more important. The healthcare record was created to enhance communication, to reduce errors. You don't have to read that doctor scribble, um, and to improve patient outcomes. But a secret within the electronic healthcare record. Each individual's patient record on average has over 200,000 data points. That's an awful lot of noise. Sometimes it's really hard to find that important piece of information that I want to pull out to impact my patient. And harnessing the EHR, using artificial intelligence and customizing it down to the patient level can really help unlock the potential of the electronic healthcare record and the big data that's in there. And so I'm gonna take you on our UF Health journey where we use this technology, AI, and customization to actually impact readmissions to the hospital. So artificial intelligence, what does that mean? It means there's a program in your healthcare record that can pull out the pieces and parts of data that are important to you, and it can put it in a place where you can easily see it. And an awful lot of the healthcare uh, vendors, the EHR vendors, they actually have modules embedded within their electronic healthcare records. I think, in fact, um, of the systems that we have at use uh, here in Jacksonville, I think almost all of them have uh, artificial intelligent modules. And so we launched that at UF Health Jacksonville. And what did it spit out? It spit out a patient list. It was a good patient list. It told us who was at risk for readmission. It was validated. It, it gave useful information. But when you looked at that list, what do you do with it? Um, on average, if I were to take any sort of physician in this room and say, go down the hallway and tell me which of your patients are at risk for readmission, they'd have that same number on that list. So it wasn't very actionable. It was valid. It was a great list. It was using the information in the EHR, but we couldn't really take action at the patient level. So then what we did with our patient population, because our main campus is in zip code 32209, we customized that artificial intelligence with specific population health factors that were important to our patients, that we knew impacted our patients. Living in 32209 puts you at greater risk from a population health standpoint than perhaps living in 32210. So we put those factors in that were specific to our patient population. We also customized it with specific diseases that we knew were high impact diseases for readmission risk in the greater Jacksonville area. And so that gave us a better list. But it still didn't give us do this. And that's what we wanted to do. We wanted the do this at the patient level. So then, using that artificial intelligence and the customization and the data that's available in the EHR, we overlaid it with the social determinants of health. 
Social determinants of health are probably one of the most important and impactful factors to getting good patient outcomes. Do you have a car? Are you worried about getting your medicine? Are you worried about paying your rent? Are you worried about getting food? Do you have access to food? And at the individual patient level, this information was available in the EHR. So it was available for Kelly Gray. And Kelly Gray's social determinants of health could be overlaid using those validated tools with the artificial intelligence, that patient customization at the population health level. And that's where we got to the, what do I do at the individual patient level? Because that social determinants of health told our case management team the specific action they needed to take for Kelly Gray to change my readmission risk vector. And so what you get in the EHR, yes, you have your artificial intelligence generated list. You then customize it and you overlay the social determinants of health. We know that social determinants of health are key to unlocking a lot of our advances in medical outcomes. And it was a way to tamp down all of that noise because it put it in an easy form in a place in the HR in one space that said, do this and you'll change your outcome. We also built it so that we can track the interventions. So what is it that we needed to do for our patients? So again, we can continue to harness the AI and the tools that are in the EHR so then we can do more population health management. So what intervention did we need to do most commonly? What interventions did we not need to do? What interventions will require more resources and more funding and more innovation? All these things are available because of the way the artificial intelligence in the EHR was harnessed. And the outcome, when you take artificial intelligence and then you overlay it with population health factors and you customize it down to Mr. S's level, for what do I need to do for Mr. S, you can see we've had some remarkable um, reductions in our readmission. Um, for those that, that don't know, um, you know, 15.8 down to a 9.8 for the, for the business people and the, and the quality people in the office or the audience, I think you'll, you'll say that, yeah, that's a pretty remarkable reduction. And there's so much more innovation that we can do in this space. We are really just starting to touch the surface of harnessing those hundreds of thousands of data points that are in the EHR and, and not just do them for research and for grants, but actually harness them in a way that we can bring that information down and customize it to the patient level to impact the patient outcome, whether it's readmission or obesity reduction or heart transplant, but actually bringing that data in a very meaningful way to impact patient outcome. Thank you very much.